The Proto-Indo-European homeland or Indo-European homeland was the prehistoric or heimat of the Indo-European languages, the region where their reconstructed common ancestor, the Proto-Indo-European language Pi, was originally spoken. From this region, its speakers migrated east and west, and went on to form the proto-communities of the different branches of the language family. The most widely accepted proposal to identify the Proto-Indo-European homeland is the steppe hypothesis, which puts the Pi homeland in the Pontic-Caspian steppe around 4000 BC. A minority support the Anatolian hypothesis, which puts it in Anatolia around 8000 BC. A notable, though unlikely, third possibility is the Armenian hypothesis which situates the homeland south of the Caucasus. Several other explanations have been proposed, including the Neolithic creolization hypothesis, Paleolithic continuity theory, and indigenous Aryans or out of India theory. These are not widely accepted, or are considered to be fringe theories. The search for the homeland of the Indo Europeans began in the late 18th century with the discovery of the Indo European language family. The methods used to establish the homeland have been drawn from the disciplines of historical linguistics, archaeology, physical anthropology and, more recently, human population genetics. Hypotheses The two leading competitors The steppe theory and the Anatolian hypothesis are the two leading competitors for the Indo-European homeland. The steppe hypothesis, a revised version of the Kurgan hypothesis, places the Pi homeland in the Pontic steppe around 4000 BC. The majority of Indo-European specialists support the steppe hypothesis, though critical issues remain to be clarified. The Anatolian hypothesis places the pre-Pi homeland in Anatolia around 8000 BC, and the homeland of Proto-Indo-European proper in the Balkans around 5000 BC. Although it has attracted substantive attention and discussions, the datings it proposes are at odds with the linguistic timeframe for Proto-Indo-European and with genetic data which do not find evidence for Anatolian origins in the Indian genpool. <laughs> Near Eastern model A notable, though unlikely, third possibility is the Near Eastern model, also known as the Armenian hypothesis. It was proposed by Gamkrelidze and Ivanov, postulating connections between Indo-European and Caucasian languages based on the disputed glottalic theory and connected to archaeological findings by Grigoryev. Topic: <laughs> Outlier theories. A number of other theories have been proposed, most of which have little or no academic currency today. Modern nationalist doctrines Indigenous Aryans, which suggests a homeland in the Indian subcontinent in the 6th millennium BC, and is favoured by Hindu nationalists. A 6th millennium BC or later origin in Northern Europe, according to Lothar Killians and, especially, Marek Zavelbil's models of a broader homeland, which is favoured by European and white ethnonationalists. Paleolithic continuity theory, with an origin in the Upper Paleolithic, Nikolai Trubetskoy's theory of Sprachbund origin of Indo-European traits Topic. Theoretical considerations Traditionally homelands of linguistic families are proposed based on evidence from comparative linguistics coupled with evidence of historical populations and migrations from archaeology. Today, genetics via DNA samples is increasingly used in the study of ancient population movements. Topic: Reconstructed vocabulary. Through comparative linguistics, it is possible to reconstruct the vocabulary found in the proto-language and in this way achieve knowledge of the cultural, technological and ecological context that the speakers inhabited. Such a context can then be compared with archaeological evidence. This vocabulary includes, in the case of Pi, pastoralism, including domesticated cattle, horses, and dogs, agriculture and cereal cultivation, including technology commonly ascribed to late Neolithic farming communities, e.g., the plough, a climate with winter snow, transportation by or across water, the solid wheel used for wagons, but not yet chariots with spoked wheels. Topic. 
Uralic, Caucasian and Semitic borrowings Proto-Uralic and Pi share a core vocabulary, such as words for name and water and similar looking pronouns. This may be due to a common ancestor, or to intensive borrowing, but both options suggest that their homelands were located near each other. Pi also borrowed words from Caucasian languages, especially Kartvelian, which suggests a location close to the Caucasus. Gramkhalidze and Ivanov, using the now largely unsupported glottalic theory of Indo-European phonology, also proposed Semitic borrowings into Proto-Indo-European, suggesting a more southern homeland to explain these borrowings. According to Mallory and Adams, some of these borrowings may be too speculative or from a later date, but they consider the proposed Semitic loans, bowl, Taurus, and wine, to be more likely. Genesis of Indo-European languages Topic. Phases of Proto-Indo-European According to Anthony, the following terminology may be used Early Pi for the last common ancestor of the Anatolian and non-Anatolian i.e. branches Post-Anatolian Pi for the last common ancestor of the non-Anatolian Pi languages, including Tocharian. Late Pi for the common ancestor of all other IE branches. The Anatolian languages are the first Indo-European language family to have split off from the main group. Due to the archaic elements preserved in the Anatolian languages, they may be a cousin of Proto-Indo-European, instead of a daughter. But Anatolian is generally regarded as an early offshoot of the Indo European language group. The Indo Hittite hypothesis postulates a common predecessor for both the Anatolian languages and the other Indo European languages, called Indi Hittite or Indo Anatolian. Although Pi had predecessors, the Indo Hittite hypothesis is not widely accepted, and there is little to suggest that it is possible to reconstruct a Proto Indo Hittite stage that differs substantially from what is already reconstructed for Pi. Topic. Dating the split-offs of the main branches Using a mathematical analysis borrowed from evolutionary biology, Don Ring and Tandy Warnow propose the following tree of Indo-European branches Pre-Anatolian before 3500 BC Pre-Tocharian Pre-Italic and Pre-Celtic before 2500 BC Pre-Armenian and Pre-Greek after 2500 BC Pre-Germanic and Pre-Balto-Slavic, Proto-Germanic c. 500 BC Proto-Indo-Iranian 2000 BC David Anthony, following the methodology of Ring and Warnow, proposes the following sequence Pre-Anatolian 4200 BC Pre-Tocharian 3700 BC Pre-Germanic 3300 BC Pre-Italic and Pre-Celtic 3000 BC Pre-Armenian 2800 BC Pre-Balto Slavic 2800 BC Pre-Greek 2500 BC Proto-Indo-Iranian 2200 BC split between Iranian and Old Indic 1800 BC Topic Step hypothesis Topic Gimbutas Kurgan hypothesis In the early 1980s, a mainstream consensus had emerged among Indo-Europeanists in favor of the Kurgan hypothesis, named after the Kurgans, burial mounds, of the Eurasian steppes placing the Indo-European homeland in the Pontic-Caspian steppe of the Chalcolithic. This was not least due to the influence of the Journal of Indo-European Studies, edited by J. P. Mallory, that focused on the ideas of Maria Gimbutas and offered some improvements. Gimbutas had created a modern variation on the traditional invasion theory in which the Indo-Europeans were a nomadic tribe in eastern Ukraine and southern Russia and expanded on horseback in several waves during the 3rd millennium BC. Their expansion coincided with the taming of the horse. Leaving archaeological signs of their presence see corded ware culture, they subjugated the peaceful European Neolithic farmers of Gimbutas Old Europe. 
As Gimbuta's beliefs evolved, she put increasing emphasis on the patriarchal, patrilineal nature of the invading culture, sharply contrasting it with the supposedly egalitarian, if not matrilineal culture of the invaded, to the point of formulating essentially a feminist archaeology. Her interpretation of Indo-European culture found genetic support in remains from the Neolithic culture of Scandinavia, where DNA from bone remains in Neolithic graves indicated that the megalith culture was either matrilocal or matrilineal, as the people buried in the same grave were related through the women. Likewise, there is a tradition of remaining matrilineal traditions among the Picts. Archaeology The Gimbutas Mallory Kurgan hypothesis seeks to identify the source of the Indo European language expansion as a succession of migrations from the Pontic Caspian steppe, originating in the area encompassed by the Sredenistag culture. C. 4500 BC. J. P. Mallory, dating the migrations later, to c. 4000 BC, and putting less insistence on their violent or quasi military nature, essentially modified Gimbutas theory, making it compatible with a less gender political narrative. David Anthony, focusing mostly on the evidence for the domestication of horses and the presence of wheeled vehicles, came to regard specifically the Yamna culture, which replaced the Sredni Stog culture around 3500 BC, as the most likely candidate for the Proto Indo European speech community. Anthony describes the spread of cattle raising from early farmers in the Danube Valley into the Ukrainian steppes in the 6th 5th millennium BC, forming a cultural border with the hunter gatherers whose languages may have included archaic Pi. Anthony notes that domesticated cattle and sheep probably didn't enter the steppes from the Transcaucasia, since the early farming communities there were not widespread, and separated from the steppes by the glaciated Caucasus. Subsequent cultures developed in this area which adopted cattle, most notably the Kukuteni Tripolian culture. Parpola regards the Tripoli culture as the birthplace of wheeled vehicles, and therefore as the homeland for late Pi, assuming that early Pi was spoken by Skellia pastoralists early Sredni Stog culture, who took over the Tripoli culture at c. 4300-4000 BC. On its eastern border lay the Sredni Stog culture 4400-3400 BC, whose origins are related to people from the east, perhaps from the Volga steppes. It plays a central role in Gimbuta's Kurgan hypothesis, and coincides with the spread of early Pi across the steppes and into the Danube Valley c. 4000 BC, leading to the collapse of Old Europe. Hereafter the Makop culture suddenly arose, Tripoli towns grew strongly, and eastern steppe people migrated to the Altai Mountains, founding the Afanasevo culture 3300-2500 BC. Vocabulary The core element of the steppe hypothesis is the identification of the Proto-Indo-European culture as a nomadic pastoralist society that did not practice intensive agriculture. This identification rests on the fact that vocabulary related to cows, to horses and horsemanship, and to wheeled vehicles can be reconstructed for all branches of the family, whereas only a few agricultural vocabulary items are reconstructable, suggesting a gradual adoption of agriculture through contact with non-Indo-Europeans. When this evidence and reasoning is accepted, the search for the Indo-European proto-culture has to involve searching for the earliest introduction of domesticated horses and wagons into Europe. Responding to these arguments, proponents of the Anatolian hypothesis Russell Gray and Quentin Atkinson have argued that the different branches could have independently developed similar vocabulary based on the same roots, creating the false appearance of shared inheritance, or alternatively, that the words related to wheeled vehicle might have been borrowed across Europe at a later date. Proponents of the steppe hypothesis have argued this to be highly unlikely, and to break with the established principles for reasonable assumptions when explaining linguistic comparative data. Another source of evidence for the steppe hypothesis is the presence of what appears to be many shared loanwords between Uralic languages and Proto Indo European, suggesting that these languages were spoken in adjacent areas. This would have had to take place a good deal further north than the Anatolian or Near Eastern scenarios would allow. According to Cortland, Indo-Uralic is the pre-Pi, postulating that Indo-European and Uralic share a common ancestor. According to Cortland, Indo-European is a branch of Indo-Uralic which was radically transformed under the influence of a North Caucasian substratum when its speakers moved from the area north of the Caspian Sea to the area north of the Black Sea. 
Anthony notes that the validity of such deep relationships cannot be reliably demonstrated due to the time depth involved, and also notes that the similarities may be explained by borrowings from Pi into Proto Uralic. Yet, Anthony also notes that the North Caucasian communities were southern participants in the steppe world. <laughs> Genetics Three genetic studies in 2015 gave support to the Kurgan theory of Gimbutas regarding the Indo-European Urheimat. According to those studies, haplogroups R1b and R1a, now the most common in Europe R1a is also common in South Asia would have expanded from the Russian steppes, along with the Indo-European languages. They also detected an autosomal component present in modern Europeans which was not present in Neolithic Europeans, which would have been introduced with paternal lineages R1b and R1a, as well as Indo-European languages. According to genetic studies, individuals from the Yamnaya culture have a mix from Eastern European hunter-gatherer and Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. Iran Chalcolithic people with a Caucasian hunter-gatherer component. Many geneticists consider haplogroup R1A to be associated with the origins and spread of the Indo-Europeans. R1A1 shows a strong correlation with the distribution of the Indo-European languages in Europe and South Asia, being most prevalent in Poland, Russia, and Ukraine, and in Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan and India. Two specific subclades dominate, namely R1Z282 in Eastern Europe and R1Z93 in South Asia and South Siberia. According to Underhill et al., 2014, the initial diversification of R1A took place in the vicinity of Iran, while Pamjav et al., 2012, think that R1A diversified within the Eurasian steppes or the Middle East and Caucasus region. In 2015, a large scale ancient DNA study published in Nature found evidence of a massive migration from the Pontic Caspian steppe to Central Europe that took place about 4,500 years ago. It found that individuals from the Central European Corded Ware culture 3rd millennium BC were genetically closely related to individuals from the Yamnaya culture. The authors concluded that their results provide support for the theory of a steppe origin of at least some of the Indo-European languages of Europe. However, archaeologists have argued that although such a migration might have taken place, it does not necessarily explain either the distribution of archaeological cultures or the spread of the Indo-European languages. <laughs> Anatolian hypothesis <laughs> Theory The main competitor to the Kurgan hypothesis is the Anatolian hypothesis advanced by Colin Renfrew in 1987. It couples the spread of the Indo-European languages to the hard fact of the Neolithic spread of farming from the Near East, stating that the Indo-European languages began to spread peacefully into Europe from Asia Minor from around 7000 BC with the Neolithic advance of farming wave of advance. The expansion of agriculture from the Middle East would have diffused three language families, Indo-European toward Europe, Dravidian toward Pakistan and India, and Afro-Asiatic toward Arabia and North Africa. According to Renfrew 2004, the spread of Indo-European proceeded in the following steps. Around 6500 BC, pre-Proto-Indo-European, located in Anatolia, splits into Anatolian and Archaic Proto-Indo-European, the language of those pre-Proto-Indo-European farmers who migrate to Europe in the initial farming dispersal. Archaic Proto-Indo-European languages occur in the Balkans Starcevo Koros Chris culture, in the Danube Valley Linear Pottery Culture, and possibly in the Bug Dniestr area Eastern Linear Pottery Culture. Around 5000 BC, Archaic Proto-Indo-European splits into Northwestern Indo-European the ancestor of Italic, Celtic, and Germanic, located in the Danube Valley, Balkan Proto-Indo-European corresponding to Gimbuta's Old European culture, and Early Steppe Proto-Indo-European the ancestor of Tocharian, reacting to criticism, Renfrew revised his proposal to the effect of taking a pronounced Indo-Hittite position. Renfrew's revised views place only pre-Proto-Indo-European in 7th millennium BC Anatolia, proposing as the homeland of Proto-Indo-European proper the Balkans around 5000 BC, explicitly identified as the old European culture proposed by Maria Gimbutas. He thus still situates the original source of the Indo-European language family in Anatolia c. 7000 BC. Reconstructions of a Bronze Age Pi society based on vocabulary items like wheel, 
do not necessarily hold for the Anatolian branch, which appears to have separated from pie at an early stage, prior to the invention of wheeled vehicles. Objections Dating The main objection to this theory is that it requires an unrealistically early date. According to linguistic analysis, the Proto-Indo-European lexicon seems to include words for a range of inventions and practices related to the secondary products revolution, which post-dates the early spread of farming. On lexico-cultural dating, Proto-Indo-European cannot be earlier than 4000 BC. Topic. Farming The idea that farming was spread from Anatolia in a single wave has been revised. Instead it appears to have spread in several waves by several routes, primarily from the Levant. The trail of plant domesticates indicates an initial foray from the Levant by sea. The overland route via Anatolia seems to have been most significant in spreading farming into southeast Europe, farming developed independently in the eastern Fertile Crescent. Non-Indo-European languages appear to be associated with the spread of farming from the Near East into North Africa and the Caucasus. According to Lazaridis et al., 2016, farming developed independently both in the Levant and in the Eastern Fertile Crescent. After this initial development, the two regions and the Caucasus interacted, and the Chalcolithic Northwest Iranian population appears to be a mixture of Iranian Neolithic, Levant, and Caucasus hunter-gatherers. According to Lazaridis et al., 2016, "...farmers related to those from Iran spread northward into the Eurasian steppe, and people related to both the early farmers of Iran and to the pastoralists of the Eurasian steppe spread eastward into South Asia." They further note that Ani "...can be modeled as a mix of ancestry related to both early farmers of western Iran and to people of the Bronze Age Eurasian steppe." which makes it unlikely that the Indo-European languages in India are derived from Anatolia. Mascarenhas et al. 2015 note that the expansion of Z93 from Transcaucasia into South Asia is compatible with the archaeological records of eastward expansion of West Asian populations in the 4th millennium BC culminating in the so-called Kura Araxes migrations in the post uruk IV period. Alignment with steppe theory According to Alberto Piazza, it is clear that, genetically speaking, peoples of the Kurgan steppe descended at least in part from people of the Middle Eastern Neolithic who immigrated there from Turkey. According to Piazza and Cavalli Sforza, the Yamna culture may have been derived from Middle Eastern Neolithic farmers who migrated to the Pontic steppe and developed pastoral nomadism. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 if the expansions began at 9,500 years ago from Anatolia and at 6,000 years ago from the Yamnaya culture region, then a 3,500 year period elapsed during their migration to the Volga Don region from Anatolia, probably through the Balkans. There a completely new, mostly pastoral culture developed under the stimulus of an environment unfavorable to standard agriculture, but offering new attractive possibilities. Our hypothesis is, therefore, that Indo-European languages derived from a secondary expansion from the Yamnaya culture region after the Neolithic farmers, possibly coming from Anatolia and settled there, developing pastoral nomadism. Wells agrees with Cavalli Sforza that there is "...some genetic evidence for migration from the Middle East." While we see substantial genetic and archaeological evidence for an Indo-European migration originating in the southern Russian steppes, there is little evidence for a similarly massive Indo-European migration from the Middle East to Europe. One possibility is that, as a much earlier migration 8,000 years old, as opposed to 4,000, the genetic signals carried by Indo-European speaking farmers may simply have dispersed over the years. There is clearly some genetic evidence for migration from the Middle East, as Cavalli Sforza and his colleagues showed, but the signal is not strong enough for us to trace the distribution of Neolithic languages throughout the entirety of Indo-European speaking Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Armenian hypothesis Gamkrelidze and Ivanov held that the Urheimat was south of the Caucasus, specifically within eastern Anatolia, the southern Caucasus and northern Mesopotamia", in the 5th to 4th millennia BC. 
Their proposal was based on a disputed theory of glottal consonants in Pi. According to Gamkrelidze and Ivanov, Pi words for material culture objects imply contact with more advanced peoples to the south. The existence of Semitic loan words in Pi, Kartvelian Georgian borrowings from Pi, some contact with Sumerian, Elamite, and others. However, given that the glottalic theory never caught on and there was little archaeological support, the Gamkrelidze and Ivanov theory did not gain support until Renfrew's Anatolian theory revived aspects of their proposal. Gamkrelidze and Ivanov proposed that the Greeks moved west across Anatolia to their present location, a northward movement of some IE speakers that brought them into contact with the Finno Ugric languages, and suggested that the Kurgan area, or better, Black Sea and Volga steppe, was a secondary homeland from which the Western IE languages emerged. A 2015 genetic study by Hawk et al. 2015 argues that their findings of gene flow of a population that shares traits with modern-day Armenians into the Yamnaya pastoralist culture lends support to the Armenian hypothesis, while Lazaridis et al. 2016 state that farmers related to those from Iran spread northward into the Eurasian steppe. According to David Reich, the most likely location of the population that first spoke an Indo-European language was south of the Caucasus Mountains, perhaps in present-day Iran or Armenia, because ancient DNA from people who lived there matches what we would expect for a source population both for the Yamnaya and for ancient Anatolians. Other hypotheses Baltic homeland Lothar Kilian and Marek Zavelabiel have proposed a 6th millennium BC or later origin in Northern Europe. The steppe theory is compatible with the argument that the Pi homeland must have been larger, because the Neolithic Creolization hypothesis allows the Pontic Caspian region to have been part of Pi territory. Paleolithic continuity theory The «Paleolithic continuity paradigm» is a hypothesis suggesting that the Proto-Indo-European language Pi can be traced back to the Upper Paleolithic, several millennia earlier than the Chalcolithic or at the most Neolithic estimates in other scenarios of Proto-Indo-European origins. Its main proponents are Marcel Ott, Alexander Hausler, and Mario Alanay. The PCT posits that the advent of Indo-European languages should be linked to the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe and Asia from Africa in the Upper Paleolithic. Employing lexical periodization, Alain arrives at a timeline deeper than even that of Colin Renfrew's Anatolian hypothesis. Since 2004, an informal workgroup of scholars who support the Paleolithic continuity hypothesis has been held online. Apart from Alain himself, its leading members referred to as scientific committee in the website are linguists Zaverio Ballister University of Valencia and Francesco Benozzo University of Bologna also included are prehistorian Marcel Ott Université de Liege and anthropologist Henry Harpending University of Utah it is not listed by Mallory among the proposals for the origins of the Indo-European languages that are widely discussed and considered credible within academia topic out of India theory The indigenous Aryans theory, also known as the out of India theory, proposes an Indian origin for the Indo-European languages. The languages of northern India and Pakistan, including Hindi and the historically and culturally significant liturgical language Sanskrit, belong to the Indo-Aryan branch of the Indo-European language family. The steppe model, rhetorically presented as an Aryan invasion, has been opposed by Hindu revivalists and Hindu nationalists, who argue that the Aryans were indigenous to India, and some, such as B.B. Lal, Konrad Elst and Srikant Talajari, have proposed that Proto-Indo-European itself originated in northern India, either with or shortly before the Indus Valley Civilization. This, out of India, theory is not regarded as plausible in mainstream scholarship. See also Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Topic External Links 
Stephanie Dutchin 2014, new branch added to European family tree. Genetic analysis reveals Europeans descended from at least three ancient groups. Richard Gray 2015, modern Europeans descend from four groups of hunter-gatherers. New strand of DNA discovered in the Caucasus is the missing piece in the ancestry puzzle. Dynakis Anthropology Blog, West underscore Asian in the Flesh Hunter-gatherers from Georgia Jones et al., 2015 For what they were We are 2016, Caucasus and Swiss hunter-gatherer genomes Eurogenes, Blogspot, The Genetic Structure of the World's First Farmers Lazaridis et al., preprint For what they were We are 2016, Ancient Genomes from Neolithic West Asia